WFMI News 2 Chief Meteorologist Tim Buckley with you here and want to give you an update on an amazingly strong Hurricane. This is Hurricane Milton now, which has really gone from just a tropical storm on Sunday morning all the way to one of the strongest hurricanes on record on this Monday evening. Incredible intensification and scary to say the least too. This is the storm that we are tracking all of this information current as of about 9 p.m. on Monday. There will be more updates to come minute by minute. If you're in the path of this thing, make sure to be seeking out that latest info. But here's the latest what we're seeing. Notice how big the storm is. It's a bit smaller than Helene was. For reference, this is the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico there. This is Cuba over here. We have the Gulf of Mexico, which is where the storm is located. That's Texas. That's Louisiana. As of the eight o'clock advisory, the wind speed is 180 miles per hour. OK, one of the strongest on record, as I said, this to me as a meteorologist is even more impressive. The pressure is 897 millibars. I don't expect that to mean anything to you, but we'll explain what that does mean in just a second. It is moving off to the east right now. It doesn't have a northward component to the flow just yet. It's only going off to the east. If we zoom in more, you'll really see the storm structure, which at times today has just been downright terrifying. Uh, the eye is extremely small inside this hurricane. At one point, it was measured at just about four miles wide. By comparison, sometimes these eyes are 30, 40, 50 miles wide. Now, actually, the smaller the eye is, it usually indicates a stronger hurricane and that is absolutely the case with this one. Now notice how close the eye wall is starting to get to the Yucatan Peninsula. Some very bad conditions could be happening there as we go into Monday night and early Tuesday morning. Hurricane warnings are posted for that north shore of the Yucatan. What you want to see with an organized and powerful hurricane is a very symmetric structure. So you want it to quite frankly look like a donut around the side, just very uniform in structure. We definitely had that for a good chunk of the afternoon. It was textbook for a strong hurricane. What appears to be happening now, notice how the eye goes from very organized to a little bit bigger. What's happening is an eye wall replacement cycle. Hurricanes go through this every now and then. It's kind of a restructuring of the storm. So what's likely to happen going into Monday night is that that extreme intensity that I just showed you is likely to come down a little bit, but it is still probably going to stay a category five as we go into tomorrow. What I'm showing you now, these are your surface temperatures of the water in this Gulf of Mexico area right around the Yucatan. That's Cozumel. There's Cancun, Mexico. Water temperatures are in the upper 80s, close to 90 degrees. So you say, well, where is it getting all this energy from? Uh, the proof is in the pudding here. You can see just how warm bath water truly like this Gulf of Mexico area is, and this is the eventual path of the storm. Now, if you look very closely, there's a little subtle shading. That's a lightish color here that is partially in the wake of Helene. This is where Helene went last week, as you might remember, about 10 to 20 years ago. There's slight cooling here. I don't know that it'll have that much of an impact, but it is expected to weaken ever so slightly off of the big numbers that it is right now a little bit before landfall. Uh, remember, I talked about the high or the low pressure with this hurricane. Uh, it is really starting to go up on those history charts. Now Milton is the fifth strongest storm by pressure on record in the Atlantic. The record for that is about 20 years ago with Hurricane Wilma back in 2005 with a low pressure of 882 millibars. We'll see if it gets any lower than it is right now, but either way, Milton is already in the record books at a top five strong hurricane by pressure and the wind speed. It is the sixth strongest in terms of estimated wind speed as well. Let's show you the path. This is the forecast path here. Category five strength going across the Gulf of Mexico. Very unusual path for Hurricane to take, but that's the way the winds are blowing this time around. As we get a little bit closer to Florida here, this would be Wednesday evening, still expected to be a category four hurricane with winds at a 145 miles per hour. This would be Thursday morning and then it crosses right over the Florida Peninsula. Now remember when we show you the forecast cone, this is not trying to communicate the size of the storm. All it's trying to do is show you that the storm center could pass in the middle. It could pass over here. It could pass as far south as this. It could also pass as far south as far north as this part of Florida. So anywhere along the west coast here of Florida needs to be on very high alert for a possible direct hit of the storm. As of now, we still don't know if it'll hit here, here or there. Those are in the realm of uncertainty. And again, it's expected to stay a hurricane the entire way 
across the Florida Peninsula, and then from there go due east across the Atlantic Ocean. I know that's a little unusual. It will stay south here in the Carolinas. We are not expecting it to have major impacts or any impacts on us here in the Piedmont of North Carolina. And you say, well, why is that? I might not have seen a storm take a path quite like that before. You're not wrong. It's unusual. I was only able to find a couple in the record books that have taken a path like this. But here's how we can explain it using the weather pattern we have right now. Very strong high pressure moving south into the eastern half of the United States. What does high pressure do? High pressure actually acts as a big block. So you can think about it in a couple of ways. To use a football analogy, this is a big offensive lineman just sitting parked over the eastern half of the United States right now. Milton is trying to come north. Hurricanes cannot move high pressure out of the way. It's quite the opposite. High pressure just sits there and these things just bounce right off. So Milton is going to come north a little bit as they often do. Then once it gets about level with the Tampa area or central Florida, it's going to start to feel the influence of that high pressure and this jet stream. Once it gets to that latitude, the winds are pushing the storm off away to the east. And believe it or not, hurricanes, they're very steerable. You can move them along just like a giant boat in the ocean. If you have the right steering currents, they will follow the flow. And that's what's going to happen with this very strong hurricane. Let's show you our futurecast model. This goes out a couple of days now and it gets us to the landfall point in Florida. This is your timestamp. Don't lose sight of that as we watch this together. So going into the day on Tuesday here, this takes us to about early Wednesday morning. This is 9 a.m. Wednesday. Notice Florida. This is the storm center. Still looks like a very powerful hurricane. They will start to feel some effects of wind and rain early on Wednesday. Then Wednesday night is the main event. This would be about 11 o'clock here. And as of now, our forecast model has it somewhere within this region between Fort Myers and Tampa. Now in those specific locations, boy, is it going to matter if the eye is north of you or south of you. It has everything to do with where the water is going to get pushed. From there, it moves across the peninsula. And as you can see, some scattered rain showers and gusty winds are possible along the Carolina coastlines, but that's really about it for our beaches here in North Carolina, aside from the rough surf and rip currents too. Forecast models, the computer models are in very excellent agreement with this storm right now. All of them are clustered in between Fort Myers and Cedar Key, Daytona Beach and Melbourne. Those areas seem to be the bullseye, but again, it's going to matter if the eye is here versus here. It matters a lot if you're in Tampa or Fort Myers to the pushing of the water. Hurricane warnings are in effect across most of Central Florida from Tampa to Fort Myers, Orlando included, all the way up to well, close to the Gainesville area, let's say. Hurricane watches on the east coast, the Atlantic coast as well. This is the scary part. This part of Florida, the west coast, doesn't often get hit with a direct hit from the storm. So when we talk about potential storm surge, some of the worst case, what could be the worst case storm surge that you might see and what should you be prepared for? Remember, these areas had about five, six, seven feet of surge last week with Helene. The worst case projections here have over a foot of storm surge possible in the Tampa Bay area. Now that would be likely to happen if the eye goes north of Tampa Bay, because then you get all that pushing of hurricane wind into the bay. If the eye goes south, that water actually gets pushed in the opposite direction because of the flow of the storm. So if you're in the Tampa area, you want it to go south of you. In the Fort Myers area, it's completely different. They have a big bay as well. A lot of forecast surge is in that area too, maybe over 10 feet in spots. Either way, we're talking about catastrophic storm surge for a good chunk of part of the west coast of Florida. It's just up for debate who will get it. So everybody there needs to be prepared for big time storm surge if you're along the coast. Big time winds. Most people will lose power probably for a long time, and that threat carries across the peninsula with those winds that we talked about. Again, why is the storm turning? Well, we talked about high pressure building in. There's also a cold front here, so all of that is at play. Notice how the winds are going to push this thing out over Florida. We have that blocking mechanism with high pressure right about here. So on Wednesday, once the storm gets to this point, it is going to carry its way out to sea. So any impacts to North Carolina, what could we maybe see around Around here at the coastal areas, a little bit of rough surf is possible. Maybe some minor beach erosion too. dangerous rip currents. Certainly likely. I don't know that that many people are swimming in October, but if you were to, that could be an issue. Make sure to please checking up on that before going out to the coast, especially once we get, let's say toward Thursday, Friday and Saturday breezy conditions. Yeah, that's possible too. And maybe a little bit of rain, but either way, this is an extremely dangerous hurricane for 
the state of Florida. Not so much the case here in North Carolina. So we'll be watching it very carefully. We'll give you any updates as we get a little bit closer to the storm path. There are two more storms, by the way, in the Atlantic Ocean. There is Kirk. There is Leslie. We will be watching those as well, but not expecting any impacts here. That's your forecast. We'll have more updates as the storm evolves.